Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Dhampur Bio Organics Limited Q4 FY24 and FY24 result conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the management's opening remarks. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Naveen Agrawal, Head Institutional Equities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of Dhampur Bioorganics Limited and SKP Securities to this financial results conference call. We have with us Mr. Gautam Goyal, Managing Director, and Mr. Nalan Gupta, CFO. We'll have the opening remarks from Mr. Goyal, followed by a Q&A session. Thank you, and over to you, Gautam. Thank you, Naveen. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this earnings call to discuss the operational and financial performance for the quarter and full year ended 31st March 2024. The company's results and investor presentations have already been uploaded on the stock exchanges and the company's website. The sugar season 23-24 has perhaps been the most volatile year in over a decade. You would recall multiple reports and trade organizations had penned down a substantial reduction of about 20 to 30 percent from the previous season in the Maharashtra and Karnataka regions, and they had projected Uttar Pradesh to crush similar to marginally higher gain as compared to the previous year. The gross sugar estimates for Maharashtra ranged from 8 to 9 million metric tons and 4 million tons for Karnataka. UP was projected to produce about 12 million tons of gross sugar production, and the country's gross sugar production was estimated to be around 30 million tons. These same bodies had further projected a further drop in Maharashtra and Karnataka for 24-25 sugar season, and some were even predicting a need for imports in 25. This perceived potential shortage resulted in, gov in the government's decision to restrict the diversion of sugar to ethanol to 1.7 million metric tons. The final sugar numbers gave a completely different picture. The gross sugar production in Maharashtra and Karnataka is estimated to be 11.5 million tons and 5.5 million tons respectively. And UP's gross sugar production should be around 11.2 million metric tons. The country's gross sugar production is estimated to be just over 34 million metric tons and the net sugar production will cross 32 million metric tons. ISMA has projected a net diversion of about 2.2 million metric tons into ethanol and the sugar consumption is estimated to be in the region of 28.5 to 29 million metric tons. And the closing stock would be a comfortable 8.5 to 9 million metric tons. This increased sugar production, coupled with pre-monsoon showers in the western region, along with the projected transition of El Nino to La Nina, will ensure adequate gain availability going forward. We are therefore confident of the restoration of the policy to encourage diversion of sugar towards ethanol. The sugar prices in North are hovering around 39 rupees a kg and 36 rupees a kg in the western part of the country. With the increased cost of production, which includes the already announced FRP for, of rupees 340 for the sugar season 24-25, ISMA has requested for a commensurate increase in the minimum selling price of sugar which has remained unchanged at 31 rupees a kg since 2018-19. Let me now give a brief synopsis of the international markets, which continued their decline due to the improved supplies from all major producers like Brazil, Thailand, and adequate domestic availability in India. The projected deficit is expected to turn surplus in 2024-25. The markets from the high of 28 cents have recently dropped to 19.10 cents on the May NY11, number 11, a drop of over 30%. Ethanol parity is at 14.5 cents. Ethanol parity is at, still at 14.5 cents, which means sugar at the current level 
this ratio favors a diversion to uh, further sugar production and could potentially make the international prices go down even further. The Brazilian crush started on time and the mix is estimated to be 52% in favor of sugar. And the total sugar production is expected to be around 42 million tons in this season. High crop numbers have also improved with the overall sugar production of 8.8 .8 million metric tons up from their initial estimate of 8 million metric tons. For the next year, the crop is expected to further improve with an estimated production of about 11 million metric tons. EU crop is expected to be the same as last year, but due to excess imports from Ukraine, there is stress building up and we may see up to 2 million tons of exports from EU to the world markets. Pakistan too is expected to allow 300,000 metric tons of sugar exports and the notification could be expected any time. Most of these sugars will find home in the region like Afghanistan and other sort of neighboring countries. Out of the total ethanol requirement of 825 crore liters, the OMCs have finalized 320.53 crore liters for the sub ethanol supply for the year 2023-24, which is basically from November to October. Against the set contracts, 234.74 crore liters has already been supplied, with the sugar sector supplying 130.47 crore liters and the balance 104.27 crore liters has been supplied by the grain sector. The current blending percentage is 11.98%. In the sugar year 2023-24, the sea heavy, heavy derived ethanol prices have increased from 49.41 rupees per liter to 56.28 rupees per liter. And so far, the price for B heavy and syrup based ethanol remains unchanged to 60.73 and 65.73 rupees per liter, respectively. While the maize derived ethanol prices have been increased from 66.07 rupees a liter to 71.86 rupees per liter. The price of ethanol from broken rice remains unchanged at 64 rupees a liter. We believe we were nimble enough to navigate this volatile year and our decision to defer the green field distillery in Meersgunge has, has been further vindicated. We remain on target to convert part of our distillation capacity to handle dual feedstock and believe this will enhance our ability to mitigate enhance our ability to mitigate risk and increase profitability. We saw a sharp decrease in revenues, primarily due to lower sugar sales, primarily due to lower sales of sugar and ethanol. The sugar sale was reduced due to a ban on sugar exports and lower sugar quotas. We sold 29.68 lakh quintals this year as against 38.3 lakh quintals in the domestic market and are exported quantities of 0.68 lakh quintals as compared to 6.98 lakh quintals during the previous years. Our ethanol sales too saw a reduction to 7.95 crore liters this year as compared to 8.75 crore liters last year. Nalin will elaborate in greater details about the breakup during his presentation. Our continuous cane development efforts resulted in improved gross recoveries. Our gross recovery stood at 11.37% this year as compared to 11.01% last year. This improvement of 0.36% in our recovery, coupled with higher bagasse savings, we were able to considerably mitigate the increase in cost brought about by the 20 rupees hike, 20 rupees a quintal hike in the SAP in UP. Our cane development efforts also helped in minimizing our reduction in cane crush to about 10% as compared to our peers in our operating areas. These measures have resulted in an overall increase in our margins. We believe our increased closing stock, our increased closing stock of sugar of 226.95 lakh quintals as compared to 14.71 lakh quintals along with better margins will give us sustained profitability going forward. Our country liquor sale volume in our spirits segment had an impressive growth of about 115%. Our sale volume stood at 2.54 million cases as compared to 
1.16 million cases last year. I now invite Nalin, our CFO, to give a deep dive into the financial and key operating numbers. Thank you. Thank you, Gautam. And good afternoon, everyone. I'll begin with the standalone financial highlights for Q4 and full year for this financial year ended 31st March 24, followed by the segmental highlights. Revenue for Q4 FY24 stood at rupees 594.62 crores as against 917.48 crores in Q4 FY23. EBITDA for Q4 FY24 stood at rupees 87.06 crores as against 115.61 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous year. EBITDA stood at 161.3 crores for this financial year as against 212.9 crores in FY23. EBITDA margin for the quarter was at 14.64% as against 12.60% in Q4 FY23. Profit after tax stood at 41.22 crores as compared to 81.95 in the same period last year. Profit after tax margin for the quarter was at 6.93% versus 8.93% in Q4 FY23. We recorded a revenue of 2,061.16 crores in FY24 as against 2,648.6 crores in the previous year. Revenue includes 530 crores of excise on country liquor as compared to 247 crores of excise last year. So the net excise, uh, net of excise turnover stood at 1,831 crores as compared to 2,402 crores last year, down by 24%. A bit of FY 24 was at 161.6 crores as against 212.91 crores in FY23. A bit of margin was at 6.84% as against 8.04% in FY23. Adjusted a bit of margin stood at 6.98% in FY24 after adjusting for one off levy expense and one time income from sale of our premises. Profit after tax stood at 48.82 crores against 112.02 crores last year. Moving on to the segmental highlights, beginning with the sugar segment. The revenue in the sugar segment was at 437.98 crores in Q4 FY24 as against 107.88 crores in FY23. Sugar segment's contribution in, re in revenue was at 64% as compared to 74% in the same quarter last year. Segmental EBIT was at 67.69 crores in this quarter, as against 56.35 crores. EBIT margins for this segment were at 15.46, as against 10.69% in Q4 of 23 Sugar revenue was at 1,590 uh, 1, crores in FY24, as against 2,252 crores in FY23. Segmental EBIT was at 79.41 crores in this fiscal, as against 101.7 crores in the previous financial year. EBIT margin for the financial year for this segment were at 4.99%, as against 4.52% in FY23. We crushed 41.44 lakh tons of gain during FY24, as against 43.22 lakh tons in last year. Sugar production in FY22 stood at 4.23 lakh tons, as against 3.51 lakh tons in FY23. We diverted 42,980 tons of sugar as compared to 59,000 tons of sugar towards heavy drive ethanol. We have diverted sugar cane of 31,150 tons of uh, sugar cane towards sugar juice drive ethanol in FY24 as against 59,888 tons of F tons in FY23. Our cane recovery efforts have paid off as net recovery for the quarter came to 10.3% as against 9.4% in FY23. We sold 79,820 tons of sugar in Q4 FY24 as compared to 84,330 tons in Q4 FY23. We sold 3.03 lakh tons of sugar against 4.53 lakh tons 
including exports of uh, 69,870 tons in the previous year. The, the sugar quantities are for the financial year. Average sugar realization is to that 38,350 per ton against 36,684 per ton in FY23. Sugar inventory as on 31st March 24 stood at 2.69 lakh tons of sugar, which has been valued at 34.75 per ton. Sugar inventory as on March 24 included white sugar of 2.1 lakh tons and 0.5 lakh tons of raw sugar. White sugar has been valued at 35.167 per ton. Sugar inventory uh, stood at 1.47 lakh tons valued, which was valued at 33,929 per ton as on 31st March 23. It is pertinent to note that increase in sugar cane price has been partly offset by our better recovery. We generated 302.5 million units of power in FY24 as against 345.31 million units in the last year. We exported 96. 0.81 million units at an average realization of 3.44 per unit in FY24 as compared to 146.73 million units at an average realization of 3.3 per unit in FY23. We also sold 2.13 lakh tons of bagasse for an amount of 49 crores in FY24 as against 1.51 lakh tons of bagasse for, for an amount of 51 crores in FY23. Now moving to our buy pool and split segment, this segment reported a revenue of 98.5 crores in this quarter as against 151.98 crores in Q4 FY23. Segmental EBIT was at 16.28 crores with an EBIT margin of 16.53. Buy fuel segment contributed 14% of the revenue, almost same as Q4 23. Full year revenue for the fuel segment, uh, buy fuels segment was at 521.36 crores as against 563.76 crores in FY23. Segmental EBIT was at 56.44 crores as against 108.9 crores in FY23. EBIT margin was at 10.83% in FY24 as against 19.32% in FY23. We produced 93.14 million bulk liters of ethanol in this year, out of which 84.39 million buck liters was derived from the AV, 3.5 million buck liters was from syrup, while the remaining was from the sea heavy. In FY23, ethanol production stood at 98.06 million BL, with 51.31 million BL was from the heavy, and 46.7 million BL was derived from syrup. Ethanol sales were at 82.68 million bulk liters of ethanol at an average relation of 58.81 per BL in FY24. As against 88.52 million BL of ethanol sales at an average relation of 60.83 per BL in FY23. Out of total sales, 74.34 million BL were from B heavy at an average relation of 60.02 per BL against 46.72 million BL at an average relation of 58.74 per BL last year. Sugar syrup, uh, syrup derived ethanol sales stood at 5.22 million bulk liters in uh, FY24, which was primarily done in Q1, against 40.8 million BL in FY23, as there was no diversion of sugar cane drive, sugar cane towards ethanol in current season. ENA sale stood at 11.1 million bulk liters, including outside sale of 3.1 million in uh, FY24, as compared to 5.2 million bulk liters, including outside 1 million sale of EMA. Ethanol stock as on 31st March 24 stood at 7.74 million bulk liters of ethanol, as against 5.54 million bulk liters as on 31st March 23. Coming to the continuous segment, we reported a revenue of 147.67 crores in Q4 FY24 as against 131.47 crores in Q4 FY23. Segmental EBIT stood at 2.18 crores as against 33 lakhs in same quarter last year. 
एवरेज मार्जिन स्टूडेंट वन पॉइंट इन क्यू फोर एफ एज अगेंस्ट पॉइंट टू फाइव परसेंट इन द कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग क्वार्टर ऑफ द लास्ट ईयर एवरेज मार्जिन बेस्ड ऑन द रिवेन्यू नेट ऑफ एक्साइज स्टूडेंट थर्टीन पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट इन क्यू फोर एफ आई ट्वेंटी थ्री एज अगेंस्ट टू पॉइंट फोर वन परसेंट इन द कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग क्वार्टर लास्ट ईयर फुल ईयर रिवेन्यू फॉर द कंट्री लिखा सेगमेंट वॉज एट फाइव नाइन्टी फोर पॉइंट थ्री सेवन करोस एज अगेंस्ट टू सेवेंटी फाइव पॉइंट सिक्स थ्री करोस इन एफ आई ट्वेंटी थ्री सेगमेंटल एवेड फॉर द Full year student 9.48 crores as against 1.31 crores in last year. Average margin student 1.59 percent in FY24 as against 0.48 percent in FY23. Average margin based on revenue net of exercise for the full year is 14.7 percent as against 4.5 percent in FY23. We saw 25.04. Cases of country liquor in uh, in this year as against 11.62 lakh cases in FY23. Average relation was at 281.51 net of exercise per case as against 250.14 per case in FY23. Coming to our debt position, working capital utilization has been higher as compared to previous year on account of higher inventory. Net fund-based working capital utilization as on 31st March 24 stood at 804 crores, as against 460 crores as on uh, 31st March 23. Long-term loan as on 31st March 24 stood at 241.44 crores, against 246.32 crores as on 31st March 23. We paid long-term loans of 78.28 crores in this year and availed fresh-term loans of 72.33. Cost for the capexes. During next year, we don't foresee major capexes except for the capex for annual maintenance and part conversion of existing distillery in the conversion of existing distillery into green bins distillery. Company continues continues to be rated at A plus by the CA. With that, I would request the moderator to open the floor for the questions. Thank you very much. We will have the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We'll take a first question from the line of Sanjeev Damani from SKD Consulting. Please go ahead. Uh, namaskar, am I audible, sir? Yes, Mr. Sanjeev Sanjeev. Namaskar, sir. Okay. Sir, my first question is that how much uh, cane was crushed in the last season, that is 22-23, uh, as against uh, in this year up to March and year after also? Are we running? All our mills, or some of the mills, have closed down. This I would like to understand first, sir. Thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Damani, last year and during the season, we crushed 42.7 lakh quintals of cane. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Last year, we had 42.7 lakh. 4 crore 27 lakh. 4 crore 27 lakh. So, 42.7 lakh turned down cane is what we crushed last last year, last financial year. Last sugar season, no? Last sugar season. Last sugar season, we crushed 42.7 lakh tons of cane. Okay. This sugar season, we should be crushing about little less than uh, 38.5 lakh tons of cane. Okay. For the financial year, the number also will not be much different. I mean, uh, okay. financial year, what is the total cane? Financial year, we crushed 41.44 in this financial year against 43.22 lakh tons last year. So 43.22 for the financial year last year, sir, and 40, 41.44 for the financial year this year. Yes, yes. For sugar season, 42.7 and 38.3. Capri 38.5. No, no, sir. Actually, uh, for sugar season only, I wanted the figure. So for the season, I am taking it as 42.7, right? Last year. And this year 38 only, 38.5 only. 38.5 हाँ जी. And now one of आपका तो दूसरा सवाल था सर हमारी 
our Mansurpur unit is still running. We should be probably shutting down operations in the next couple of days. Now, the rest of the mills are all closed, sir. Anji. Uh, crushing is, uh, sorry, uh, crushing is stopped uh, at all other mills. So now, now coming to, uh, you know, can you give a small commentary about uh, some extra efficiency that you could generate or extra uh, 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 cane procurement you, you could do unit-wise? You know, a small commentary on that, uh, on our, I think we have some four, three or four locations of sugar mills. Uh, so, can you make a small commentary on it, uh, so that we understand which are the units which are having good availability of cane, uh, the, uh, had had good availability of cane this year, and what are the likely prospects in next uh, season also, sir. And as to uh, some red rot or any other problem is likely to occur, or are we out of that? Because we understood that uh, in some of the area in Western UP, this problem had emerged. Uh, uh, in certain uh, areas. So kindly give your uh, reply. Thank you. Sanjeevi, as you correctly mentioned, so let me first give you uh, on the cane. Uh, we have a sugar factory, some three basic districts, and the three districts are Asmoli is the biggest sugar factory, where, which is in the Sambal district. Our cane reduction in Asmoli, in Asmoli last year we had crushed. 17.4 uh, lakh tons of cane. Uh, this year we will be doing just a little less than 15 lakh tons of cane. Okay. 14.9 uh, is the cane crash this year in Asmoli. Asmoli saw a 14% cane drop in cane right. crash. Right. Our, in this region, our neighboring factories have seen a cane drop uh, to the tune of anything between say 25 to about 30 percent. Okay, sir. Actually, the factories in our neighboring areas or our colleagues in our scene, about a 25 to 30 percent cane drop. And our cane drop is being uh, restricted to 14 or percent. Thank the sir. second factory, Mansoorpur, the second biggest factory, Mansoorpur, which is in West UP, okay. our cane crash last year was 14.5. 6 lakh tons of cane. This year we should be crushing about 13.7 to 13. Point, about 13.7 lakh tons of cane. Okay, sir. The cane drop here will be just about 5.5% okay. which is commensurate with the, our other colleagues in this area. Okay. The third factory, Mirganj, last year we crushed 10.5 lakh tons of cane and this year we have crushed 93.5 lakh tons of cane and the cane drop is 11%. Again over here, the average drop of all our neighboring factories is in the region of 20%. Okay. As a group, our average drop is about 11 or percent, 10 and a half to 11 percent. And in our neighboring areas, in our region, the average drop that we see is among all the groups and the peers that we compare ourselves with is about again 17 to 18 percent. Okay. Sir. Some of them are higher than 20 percent. Okay. As Nalin and we were mentioning, our recovery, our net recovery and gross recovery is higher this year. In the financial year, we are higher by a, a gross recovery after diversion, uh, before diversion, is 0.37% higher during the financial year. Okay. And please keep in mind, this is also because most of the factories shut down in the peak recovery area. Okay. Uh, peak recovery pay because they were shut down, so this, in spite of that, the gross reco net recovery is higher. Very nice, if we had a normal season, this recovery could have been 0.45 to 0.5 higher than last year. Okay. Uh, with regards to red rot, you know, we are. I don't think West UP is completely out of the woods. We are making all out intensive effort towards containment of red rot, not to allow it to spread, eradication of infected bushes, and uh, replacement of varieties into like CO11A 15023. Right, I do believe our cane development efforts that we have been talking about for the last two years. We do see, we do believe we are able to get some sort of sustained results because our cane crushing, our recoveries have improved and our crushing drop has not been as drastic. As okay. compared to next year, uh, again, what we are, we don't foresee, we are not seeing an excessively high increase in cane acreage. Okay. okay. Uh, and this is also validated by our colleagues and everybody else in the region. Okay. In acreage in UP, we are not seeing any substantial. We are not really seeing any increase. 
we do believe we should be able to get there to at least this level. If not, meet our entire quantity, our entire commitment. Okay, sir. And uh, are there any plans of new uh, products like biochemicals or uh, CBD? Well, we are waiting for the. See, first and foremost, we are already this year. We are in the process of converting our existing distillery into a dual feed distillery. Uh, let the CBG policies and everything else becomes more crystal. But at least for the next six months, we don't see any major capex decisions. We'll wait and watch when the next year numbers, cane price, sugar price, MSP, and everything becomes more clear. Will the grain based ethanol be uh, uh, having good margins or marginal? Well, we hope they'll have good margins. Uh, uh, apart because from the grain prices are going up. Have, have us, uh, let us have. Better capacity utilization, and our small unit is also there is a lot of maize in this area, so we do believe we should have a good steady margin there. So you rely more on locally procured maize rather than government maize. Again, you know whether we buy through the government or wherever the prices are cheaper, we'll get it from there. Everything. Okay. Okay. So thanks a lot. These were the questions I had. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Karan Mehta from Nizar Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible, sir? Yes, Mr. Mehta. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, so, uh, my first question is, how much is the revenue uh, that we generated from branded sugar, and uh, what's our market share in this, and uh, what are our plans to grow this business? So our market share isn't uh, very high on this current. The exact revenue number, Nalan will just give it to you shortly. Uh, we are uh, at this point of time not looking to be very aggressive in rolling the branded play. We do believe, uh, I mean, long, medium term, we do believe there could be an opportunity here. On the immediate short term, that is for the next six months, I don't think we will have a greater volume, but we are doing some inroads and making some studies into both the kind of products we can offer, can we become multi-product, but it's still at a very early stage. We're still at the drawing board stage. Okay. Uh, and uh, secondly, sir, uh, what's the impact of change in ethanol policy on our financials? See, this had a, as we were mentioning, uh, current, you know, two things. First and foremost, we do believe we would like to give ourselves a pat on the back we timely took certain decisions which were deferring a Mirganj distillery when we started looking at the monsoon and the different kind of numbers coming out. Secondly, we do believe uh, going forward in UP at least, we do believe B heavy probably will be a more viable option. We have adequate capacities there. The ethanol policy, as I was mentioning, with adequate comfortable sugar stocks and we don't see a big, big downside in the coming year. I mean, the overall numbers which are coming out, we could see some sort of 7 to 8% drop in overall loss of the production. But we are comfortably placed with, some, with uh, opening stocks and everything else. So we do believe the ethanol policy should be more favorable towards diversion. Now, whether the government will allow it in its entirety or whether they will be a little bit cautious, I guess, as the season and the month unfold and the monsoons and all the other data start coming out, we'll get a better handle. Uh, so uh, just getting a broad picture, like for S2, what's the impact that we faced? Sorry, I didn't hear that question clearly. Could you repeat uh, for, that? For H2, H2, what's the impact that we have faced due to the change in ethanol policy? See, because of the government restricting the diversion of sugar into ethanol, we all had to go towards the ethanol. So we obviously will not have enough raw material available for the entire uh, off-season. Uh, our grain-based capacity is still not on stream. It will only come on to stream somewhere during Q3. So we do estimate that we will have some idle time in our distillery during the next two months, next, next four to five months. Okay. Okay, and uh, sir, uh, just a broad uh, question over the ethanol thing. Uh, for if we uh, are to uh, put up a green, green field sugar ethanol or a green uh, green ethanol distillery, then what's the capex and asset turnover that uh, we are uh, we will be looking at? See, I mean, we are right now only looking to convert our about you know we have 
about 40% of our capacity to a dual feed capacity. So our capex is going to be considerably, is only a marginal capex. Uh, about 60, uh, we, we do hope it will be a little lower than 60 crores. And we have, we are eligible for the interest subvention scheme of the government of India for this set capex. And we do hope this will, what this will do is it will help us achieve maximum capacity utilization and give us the flexibility to do further, you know, value addition, whether we go in for B or we go in for C and where do we believe we'll have a better value add, we will be able to play that game. Uh, sir, this, this question was just to understand the industry dynamics. Like, uh, if any company wants to put up a, uh, a sugar ethanol or grain based uh, eth uh, ethanol distillery, then what's the uh, asset turnover that they will be looking at? Uh, just to understand that industry dynamics. Yeah, very, again, very difficult. You know, this is a very broad based question which will, be, which will have regional implications, capacities that people are going to look at. So there is no off-the-cuff number, you know, you'll have a different number for 100 KL versus uh, 300, 500 KL and which part of the country somebody looking to put it up there. So I mean, honestly, I think this is going to be a little bit, you know, I mean, if I give you any number, it will be really... Uh, All I, I, you know, we'll uh, I would be very cautious in putting up a greenfield this will be at this point of time. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, fine, sir. That's it from my side. Uh, thank you for all the clarification. Thank you. Just to answer your question on the branded sale, we sold 31,000 tons of branded sale this year, which uh, accounts for around 120 crores of turnover in our total sugar turnover. Okay, for FI24. FI24, yes, that's true. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Rajakumar Vaidyanathan, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Am I audible? Yes, good afternoon, Rajakumar ji. Yeah, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, sir, I have uh, three questions and one clarification. So should I go ahead and ask everything at one go or uh, should I ask one by one? Please, please ask all three. We are writing it down and it will be easier for us to answer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Sir, uh, first question is, I, I would like to know what is the expected production for the current uh, ongoing quarter? Uh, because last, uh, last year, in the same quarter, you produced about 50,000 tons. So just wanted to know uh, what would be the expected production for the current quarter. And also, do you expect uh, the, the sugar quota to go up uh, in the upcoming months and quarters? And the third question, sir, or are these only two questions? No. Yeah, just two more questions. Uh, so one housekeeping question and then uh, one uh, one question on the lines. Okay, on the sugar quota, Raj Kumarji, you know, we historically, if you see, the quotas in the month of May and June are generally higher. Then they are then they during monsoon they come down and then they become a little higher during the festive months. And this is also the election sort of time. So May we do expect May and June quota to be on the higher side at least. I would not be surprised if they are you know, 4 to 5 percent higher than last year. And that seems to be the trend uh, for the last two to two, or last one or two months also. Uh, now, on a sugar production for the current quarter, 2.75 lakh tons is the sugar that we estimate to produce in this quarter. Sorry, sir, what is the number? 2.7 lakh Two point seven lakh quintals. Two point so twenty seven point twenty seven thousand five hundred tons. Two point seven five lakh quintals okay. is what we expect to produce this quarter. Okay, okay. And uh, and so uh, just uh, okay. Uh, next one is on housekeeping question. So if I see the cost line items, employee cost and other expenses for the current quarter, which are the the last year similar quarter, they are showing a significant drop. So just one more. Are there any one offs or uh, just uh, if you can give some color? Uh, Mr. Mathur, this uh, Rajkumarji, sorry, uh, this cost drop in cost only because of the betterment and recovery. See, there was an increase in co uh, clean cost, which has been partly offset by the re uh, increase in recovery. So our cost has increased by 17, uh, 76 rupees a quintal. Okay. No, I'm asking on the PNB side, if you see the numbers, the absolute numbers. The so employee cost for the current quarter is about 22.8 crores, which are 33.79. Rajkumarji, maybe repressive, we couldn't hear you very clearly. We could understand your question clearly. If you can be a little slower, then maybe there, there's a little disturbance in the line. Mr. Vajana, yeah. no. I request you to use your handset mode, please. 
No, I have my hand. I'm using hand to tell you, ma'am. Okay. So, see, the question is, see, the employee, if you see the employee cost for the current quarter, it is 22.81 crores, the standalone financial. Which are we 33.79 for the uh, same quarter, the same quarter previous year? So uh, employee cost, okay. employee cost. Uh, Mr. Ashwa, if you see the total cost, because the uh, it's uh, it's being the seasonal industry, so total employee cost for the year is 93.94 for as against 105 for the quarter. So also employee employee cost, Ashwamati, I would imagine because the factories, some of the factories close earlier than last year. So okay. People are paid off, and therefore you all you generally find a reduction in employee cost when the factory operation shut down because of the seasonal nature. Okay. Okay. Got it, sir. And similarly, other expenses the drop is significant. One twenty two crores last year was very seventy seven. Uh, a reason for that is because in last year in this quarter there were export logistic cost on account of exports. That that was the major con major contributor in other cost. And this year we don't okay. have any exports. Okay, okay, got it. And so the last question is, uh, sorry, any uh, plans for buyback because you have deferred your, uh, uh, you know, the expansion plans on the distillery side. Uh, that is one. And I, you know, again, extending the same question, see, uh, is there any difference between your unit, Visali, Dampur sugars? Because if I see capacity-wise, everything is more or less similar, but Dampur sugar is commanding better valuation in the market. So is there any reason? And uh, and again, uh, you know, and on the name also, why we are having bioorganics uh, the suffix to the name? So is there anything unique? Uh, you know, we have uh, compared to other sugar companies. See, I, I will not be in a position to really talk about uh, why the valuations and all. We will we are continuing to do our best, and we hope we will uh, our market cap and everything else improve as our performance continues to improve over the years. Bio-organics, you know, as you understand, this is part of the overall Dhampo Sugar Mills group. We do believe in the last two years since the merger, our overall average capacity utilization and cane crush has gone up. Uh, this year has been an aberration, but again, our drop has been lower than our peers. I would not like to mention names and you know, would not like to compare here. This is not the right forum for, not, not the way we would like to operate. Lastly, uh, you know, on the uh, bio-organics, uh, Ashkumaji, our vision and inter we've always been talking about, we do believe long term it will be worthwhile for the company to explore the entire end of value additions with this sector, the opportunities this unfolds. So no, ethanol, of course, is a big part. As they were mentioning, we, we continue to monitor and watch the bio CNGs and the bio fertilizers and other bio organic chemicals. We are, this is part and parcel of what we are continuing to monitor and visualize. And as t whenever the times are opportune, we would like to get into some of these businesses. But as of now, we don't have anything concrete to announce. Uh, we, are not, uh, we don't have any concrete, we don't have any plans for the immediate future to do a share buyback. Uh, you know, let the top line and the money come into the balance sheet and then we will, only after the money is realized and the money is realized in the balance sheet, then we will look at the best way to utilize this money, whether it's to buy back or to do look at some other expansions or opportunities, acquisition opportunities. Okay. Thanks, Lord. So I have two more questions. I'll join back uh, the queue. Thank you, Rashmi. Thank you. We'll take our next question from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor Company. Please go ahead. Uh, Namaskar, sir, and thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Firstly, uh, if you could, you outlined 60 crore capex for retrofitting uh, at a, a, a smaller unit. Uh, other than that, what is what are the capex we have outlined for the other segment or for the whole year as a whole? Uh, what what have we chalked down? So, Sakhi ji, our baki ka dekhi jo normative capex is hote hai, some de bottlenecking replacement of you know worn out plant and machinery depreciated equipment. We do believe we should our capex should be in the region of you know 35 crores plus minus 5 crores is what we are projecting for the current uh, off season. But there is no capacity augmentation in any segment. Ke liye. It is all uh, maintenance capex. So we don't need capacity augmentation. You know, we already crushed 4.27 crore quintals of cane, 42.7 lakh tons of cane last year. Right. And looking at the cane numbers, we don't see a big jump in the coming year. 
So, you know, why there is no need to do any major capex augmentation. When the cane crop goes up, uh, and we have two of our units where there is potential for increase in cane crop, and we will try to time it accordingly. Right. So, and your retrofitting work I'm doing, when will that get commissioned? That we are targeting to have it ready in this final, in this uh, calendar year, for sure. Right. When we look at our the, the the government policy for the country liquor, it seems that maize will be the preferred crop uh, for for liquor for country liquor going ahead, and uh, biofuels would be the the uh, the molasses part. So uh, are we also working on the same uh, uh, same thought process that the feedstock for the two segments should be. Are uh, different and will be uh, there will be a stable uh, a policy on the same going ahead. Actually, as an Sakiji, I think you know uh, for UP molasses, we do believe even in the near future will continue to be the preferred feedstock for country liquor. Uh, about more than 95, 90 percent of the sale in UP is in uh, country liquor is in from molasses based country liquor. And uh, the price for maize based country liquor is still higher than the sugar-based country liquor, so we don't see much of a market switch happening there in the near future. So we do, so th therefore we believe the opportunity will be to provide more grain-based ethanol towards the biofuel segment and probably some part of our sugar-based alcohol will go towards country liquor as our market share improves. That seems to be our understanding for the coming years, but of course if a better opportunity avails, you know, we will like to grab it Immediately. For FY24, our average realization for ethanol was lower than last year. So, yes, you please explain me. The thing is that because syrup quantity has also been lower, the BIB and C quantities have come in and, and, the, and the higher ENA percentage. Right. ENA is sold at 19 and a half rupees towards country liquor. Uh, that is the price which UP government has sort of given a mandate for. So therefore, if that percentage increases because they have increased the ethanol ENA ratio, the ENA percentage has been, the country liquor obligation has been increased on all sugar factories. So coupled with the reduction in B and syrup based alcohol, syrup based ethanol commanded a premium of about 5 rupees over B and uh, it commands over a 10-15% premium over C. Uh, Please come again for the last part I, I missed. After say last year we had a substantially higher syrup based ethanol and the balance right. quantity was B, B ethanol. Right. And the ENA percentage was lower because the obligations were lower. So this season also the sugar, uh, the sugar season, the obligation is 19 percent. The, the percentage has been kept same uh, for, uh, for the country liquor. And this year of the obligation remains at 19%. But last year, 19% uh, on B, 26% on C. But last year, if you recollect, they increased the obligation towards the second half of the season when the factory shut down. So the bulk, of, so they had increased, increased it from retrospective effect. So bulk of that impact, you know, that increased impact actually did not come in the previous financial year. It came in this financial year. Thank you. And two small points, and I'll join the sugar. First of all, the branded sugar part you mentioned about revenue of 124 crore. So uh, for the for the full year, uh, uh, so how should we look at the margin profile? I think so. We we did around 1600 crore. Uh, so uh, so closer to eight eight nine percent we have done from the branded sugar. And what what kind of margins we uh, attribute to the segment? And also going at uh, uh, what. What can be the incremental sales from the branded sugar going ahead? How is the acceptance and the price for our point if you could uh, give some more understanding? The branded sugar market continues to remain very competitive, but we want to we don't want to discount our sugar and sell. Therefore, the volume, we do but we are we do see a incremental volume growth. It'll probably be a sort of low double digits. I'm not at this point of time very I mean we don't want to discount our sugar and squeeze our margins. That's not the game we want to play. Uh, so going forward also we do expect our branded sugar business to continue to increase uh, in a normal organic manner uh, and 
Yes, sorry, the other question was uh, apart from branded sugar, I think that was it. That, that, that's what we see. This was the yes, this was the only question. But what kind of growth can we see? I mean, we will be diverting more of the sugar into the branded part since it, we are commanding a premium. We just wanted to uh, understand. The capacity is there. Uh, capacity as the demand keeps on coming yeah. up, and if our uh, distribution system as it keeps on improving. Hmm. But too early to predict a big growth number. We, I mean, if you look at historical trends, about 10 to 15 percent growth would probably be the right number for our own brand. Also, oh, pharma base se kitna contribution aa raha hai aur kaisa growth dekh rahe hai? I think so. We have alluded to the fact that that was also a, a high margin segment. It's a pharma market, as we understand, it's a long term play. To make end growth, we, I mean, compared to last year, we will see an increase in volume. We'll have a couple of you know, maybe about 25, 30,000 tons of sugar will go towards the segment in different players. But, uh, you know, this is a business, it takes time to develop and grow. With certain institutions and farmers, they have a big, you know, lengthy qualification process. They have lengthy, you know, processes. So, uh, but this is, again, a growing market. We do hope we will see double-digit uh, sort of growth numbers here. Last year, what was the revenue? Uh, yes, ma'am. Ah, I'll join just to answer my answer. What was the last year's sales number for the farmer grade Last year was the first year, and 90% of our sugar went for exports. So we didn't have much quantities okay. in the domestic market. We had about 10,000 odd tons last year. Okay. For the closing remark, I'll come join with you. But please do give an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kumar. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we request you to limit the questions to two per person. Kindly join back the queue for follow-up questions. We'll take the next question from the line of Devendra Chawla from Prasun Exponentials. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for taking my question. I'm a bit new to the stock, so I just wanted to get a sense what's the management's long-term vision for this business and what are the challenges uh, they see coming up in the next couple of years to getting towards uh, where, 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 where they want to go. Hi, uh, David. Sorry, I couldn't completely. There was a little disturbance of voice. Uh, we got lost. And would you start repeat the question, please? Sure. So uh, there's two parts. One is, what's the management's vision for this business? Because it seems like there's a lot of lines of business in the company currently. And the second is, what are the challenges that the management is seeing in, in this business at, uh, over the next couple of years to get to where it wants to go? We've always been very clear that we are looking to increase, enhance our profitability and have sustained growth. Uh, we have been focusing uh, very extensively in uh, augmenting our cane acreage and cane area. So uh, prior to this year, we did see a jump, about 10% jump over the last two years in our cane growth and cane crushing. This year, unfortunately, because of various weather-related factors, the gain growth numbers for UP and our parts were down by about 15 to 20 percent. But we do believe we did a good job by limiting it to about 10 percent. Uh, we, as we spoke about in the previous years, we are looking at continuous value addition and byproduct utilization. So ethanol capacities have been streamlined. Now we are looking at grain because you know we believe. We have certain strategic advantages in able to source grain at a cheaper price. There is value there. And now we are seeing a certain amount of value addition play which could come in as our businesses and institutional sales and pharma sales develop, maybe branded play develops going forward. We could see some better value addition in a country liquor business. So those kind of things will come into play. And we will be prudent with our, you know, we will be, uh, we will grow, we would like to grow, but grow cautiously and Prudently, that has been our sort of mantra since the demerger. We've been sort of sticking to that. Oh, okay, thank you so much. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Vivek Gupta from Novus Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, one more call, oh, question I had regarding ESG. Uh, there are various initiatives uh, which is mentioned in the presentation. So is there uh, a big cost attached to these initiatives or uh, how does it, uh, it, does it affect margin? No, see, we don't, uh, we as a company have, do believe in ESG, that is something which we continue to do. But again, you know, we, we do like to believe it's all very prudently done. 
we believe long term it will also yield better results in our, gain, uh, in our association with our farmers. We do believe it will also help us with marketing our products to the institutional customers that we are looking to do. But to answer your question, there is not any, I mean, there is no much, uh, the cost structure is not any significant. And if you see our overall cost, we are trying to be cautious about that and we don't think we will go overboard in any of these expenditures. So one last question on the uh, pain crush. On hindsight, uh, do you think the increase in capacity for uh, pain crush uh, was uh, earlier than expect, I mean, uh, earlier than it should have been, given that the uh, production has been lower? See, that is uh, hindsight is 20. You know, we can always uh, hindsight is 2020, as they say. But the best way to look at it is because of this, uh, at least some of the last two years, if you see, we were able to do a steady growth in cane crush. And one of the reasons where I uh, reduction in capacity utilization or our reduction in overall cane availability is 10% is also a factor of having the finance crush. You don't see that season duration increase remaining same. You see the season duration decreasing, but the crushing capacity, the number of days reducing, but you crush the same amount of cane per day. Mm -hmm. And you know, any of these capexes, you don't really do it for a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, there was a weather phenomena this year. There were certain, you know, yield phenomena, diversion phenomena were substantially higher this year because of certain policy reasons. And we do believe we will bounce back sooner than later. Okay, so the uh, recovery will be better because of the higher capacity, crushing capacity. For sure, yeah. recoveries are better, and overall, even our average utilization will continue to improve. I'm very confident of that. Sure. Thank you, sir. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Sanjeev Damani from SKD Consulting. Please go ahead. Uh, Namaskar. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I was uh, going to ask you uh, two things. One is Molas's talk of B and C as on 31st March. That is my first question. And secondly, uh, uh, is government going to give an enhanced price for B heavy now? Because for C, they have revised by 6-7 rupees interminently uh, in the uh, 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 last year or in the first quarter of the uh, this year kindly reply you second part come at the top of the stock number of the will just give it to you well as this VT price pay we are requesting for a revision but uh, personally if you ask me I'm not hopeful next year they should definitely see it we could we should definitely we should hopefully see a revision for this year maybe not Okay, but still we are going to supply them, uh, uh, you know, made out of B only. Or, or can we extract the B and uh, fully make it uh, recover the sugar and then sell it as C? What would be our preference? We have done a last year planning our capacity to divert towards C. You know, if you look at our Mirgan unit did not have any capacity to make C. Okay. We had we had planned for it last year itself, and Mirgan may have C banana pie. Mansoorpur or Swali may be banana but to a little lower, uh, we could not divert entirely, extract the entire sugar. Next year, I do believe the heavy will be there, but we will be able to play this game a little better because we will be more better, better equipped, but we don't have to do capex for this. Okay. Okay, sir, now this is what we are carrying the stock from Mola Sesta, as much as we can do, how much of a liter of uh, uh, ethanol will we get? I want to know this because uh, whatever is left out uh, uh, last year, so we have to operations ke pete, matab, uh, 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 aur kitna abhi company mein aega. That is my, uh, you know, estimate I want to make. Double sir, your last question is linked to the stock of molasses as on 31st March. Uh -huh. so we have 2 lakh 10 thousand quintals of B heavy molasses and 6 lakh quintals of C heavy molasses as on 31st March. Right, sir. और इसमें से हम कितना इथेनॉल कितना लीटर इथेनॉल दे पाएंगे हेलो इसमें जमानी सा थोड़ा सा भी टेंडर भी आ रहे हैं कौन से क्वार्टर में कितना आएगा थोड़ा सा प्रीमैच्योर है कहना बिकॉज़ ईएमए के कमिटमेंट्स भी हैं सो यू नो बट टोटल कैपेसिटी आप देखिए बिहेवियर की जनरली इंडस्ट्री स्टैंडर्ड्स इज इन द रीजन ऑफ 20 एनीथिंग बिटवीन 28 एंड हाफ टू 30 30.5 एंड सी की कैपेसिटी जनरली लोग देखेंगे तो 22 और 24 के बीच में रहती है we work Achha. hard to try and see a lower segment, a lower length in the but for our levy key obligations, the government key commitments for decade, 
क्वार्टर टू क्वार्टर अभी एग्जैक्ट नंबर नहीं दे पाएंगे सर ओके अच्छा सेकेंडली सर अभी अपना ये पी ओ टू और फर्टिलाइजर का यदि हम सेल करते हैं तो उसमें से मोटा मोटी सालाना कितना रेवेन्यू आ जाता है सर फर्टिलाइजर से हमने अभी पी डी एम पे भी हैव नॉट मेड दी इन्वेस्टमेंट गवर्नमेंट इज टॉकिंग अबाउट इट विल वेट फॉर द इलेक्शन टू बी ओवर एंड फॉर हैविंग कम्प्लीट क्लैरिटी एंड पॉलिसी ओके आप पोटास रिकवरी ऐसा कोई बातें आ रही है अगेन भी डिपेंडेंट अपॉन द टोटल नंबर ऑफ डिस्टिलरी ऑपरेशन डेज इस साल डिस्टिलरी पूरे साल इसलिए नहीं चल पाएगी बिकॉज हमको यू नो वी कुड नॉट मेक एंटायर बी हैवी क्वान्टिटीज ओके नंबर शुड भी इस साल भी इस एफ आई में कितना कहते हैं हमने संजीव एस एन जे डबल डॉट डी एम एन आई हाँ जी एट द रेट जी मेल डॉट कॉम बड़ा सिंपल है संजीव चलिए थैंक यू नहीं नहीं दो काइंड ऑफ यू सर आप बहुत कोपरेटिव हैं और सर अब हमें ये थोड़ा लग रहा है कि क्या हम गवर्नमेंट में रिप्रेजेंटेशन दे सकते हैं कि साढ़े उन्नीस रुपये में वो हमसे ई एम ए ले रहे हैं तो फिर हम लोगों का कैसे सस्टेनेबिलिटी होगा सर सर बिल्कुल दीजिए हम लोग तो रोज ये तो हम लोगों का मतलब आई थिंक मंथली डिस्कशन का पॉइंट है So I want to ask you, sir, is the worst behind us? So in the first, uh, like uh, our recovery is now improving. Pressing is still a problem, but uh, otherwise, is like uh, on a company level, on um, the numbers level, is the worst behind us? Well, we are feeling. Uh, we know we. I mean, other than the fact that we had lower sales because of lower quota, margins are better with it. We do believe we are on the right path and right track. We do see some green shoots uh, in our businesses. So we uh, we do uh, we we do we don't think we have any major capexes lined up. So we believe we have a good sort of we have good times coming. But you know that would be what we can do. We are doing with it. Uh, yes, sir. And sir, if we uh, compare the June quarter that is now ongoing versus the last year, the the molasses and the uh, ethanol will be there in the current June quarter as well, sir. we did give you the stock and we are running our distilleries now that is the break up at what time how much will it when you think the b and when it will be c i think not the tenders are going to be out so there is a little bit of you know, little planning which has to be done also we have to take some time out because of our grain conversion so this kind of fine tuning is happening but they will the, the molasses that we have in stock will be converted into ethanol in this current financial year which quarter how much will get converted we won't be able to tell you the exact amount But please do keep please do keep a watch on the sugar prices. You know, we given you we shared our cost of production. You you know our stock numbers. Uh, and if the MSP increases, uh, which there is, uh, you know, which probably this should after the elections, then you know people who have adequate stock should have that benefit. And so, what is the current uh, sugar price that we are selling? Like uh, in the month of March, our average was about this about 38.75 for the financial year. In March itself was about 38.5. In April, the prices are in the region of 39.5, 30 between 39 and 39.5. Our prices are generally higher than the others, from what I've noticed from the others. So, what the refined sugar is the reason for this? Both refined sugar and the value addition, which we are trying to do with different institutions and things like that, the product mix and the refined sugar. Okay. And uh, so this uh, ethanol, uh, that grain you said, we should start in this calendar year. That is, we are quite hopeful. We should be able to start in this calendar year. And sir, any other major capital that we are looking at apart from this grain grain system? So what we said, they just normally uh, basically marginal capex to replace old machinery or some you know debottlenecking here and there, nothing major. And sir, so this uh, this uh, institutional sales or these pharma sugar sales, sir, how much uh, as a percentage of our total sugar are we looking at? 
So going forward, we want to keep on increasing our market share. This year, it probably will be about a 20% market share in this current financial year. We could have about a 20% plus market share. It could be a little higher. But uh, going forward, we do hope that this, you know, again, too early to give numbers. In this FI, in this financial year, what was the, this pharma, this entire institutional sale volume started coming in for this sugar season. And this sugar season, the new sugar as per quota, we could only start selling from about December, January. 15,000 yeah. tons in quota so, to the institution. So uh, we are getting a sizable, we are making inroads and, you know, to give exact numbers and percentages on the quotas is a little difficult at this stage. But every quarter we will try to give you all some sort of an indication as to how we are faring now. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take that as the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Goel for closing remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for all your questions and uh, for attending our conference call. Uh, please, as usual, if you have any questions that you haven't been able to answer, please do contact us on our email and we will be able to we'll answer it back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. On behalf of SKP Securities Limited, that concludes the conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you.